I want to show you three different yield functions in Excel. So the first one I'm going to show you is the yield function, Y-I-E-L-D. And here are the inputs. You need the settlement date, that's the day you take possession of the bond, the maturity date, the percent coupon, the price of the bond per hundred dollars par value, the redemption value of a hundred, Again, it's usually 100 when we do these. Um, the frequency, so you can have coupons that are paid once, twice, or four times a year. And the basis, which has to do with how we count the days and the months. And I'll talk about that in a second. So let's try this. Let's put in the function Y-I-E-L-D and the first variable is settlement date so let's just put that in and put a comma in second uh, value is maturity third is the coupon then the price the redemption value the frequency and then this what we call basis and zero is the US version of a 30 day month and a 360 day year. I don't know how well you can see it down here. One is actual, actual. So the actual number of days in the month and the actual number of days in the year. Two would be the actual days in the month, but a 360 day year. Three would be an actual um, number of days in the month and 365 day year. And four would be the European version of 30 and 360 which is slightly different than the US version so we'll put in the we'll use the 30 360 version and what do we get we get 4.34 percent and that that makes sense if you think about it the yield has gone up so the price of the bond has fallen below the redemption value so quite easy to calculate this, this is essentially a yield to maturity you can also have a yield to discount. Now this is the case where a bond doesn't pay periodic interest payment, so no coupon payment, it just pays at maturity. So this would be the case of, for example, a treasury bill. So let's put in these arguments. Again, you have settlement date, the date you take possession of it, the maturity date, the price you paid, the redemption value, and the basis. So again, the function is Y-I-E-L-D-D-I-S-C and again we'll put in these values of the settlement date, the maturity date, the price you paid for it. Remember you pay a price well below that redemption value and then all your interest is the difference between the redemption value and the price you paid and then basis is what we discussed uh, just a moment ago and here we get 3.12 percent and the last yield function I want to show you is yield at maturity y-i-e-l-d-m-a-t so this is the case where you have a bond it has a coupon rate but it doesn't pay it pays all the values when the bond matures. So the calculation is going to be a little different here. Let's see what we have here. So yield at maturity. So the function is Y-I-E-L-D-M-A-T. And the values we put in again are settlement date, maturity date, the date when it was issued, because remember you're getting interest. It's not paying that interest until it matures so even though it was issued a while ago you're getting that interest the rate the price per hundred dollar par value and again that basis which has to do with the how we count the days in the month and the year and we get here six point six two percent so here Excel has made it easy for us. 
It has functions to calculate yields under different assumptions. Okay, in this case, it's where you receive all of the payments at maturity. In the previous example, uh, yield discount is where you have a discount security. It doesn't have any coupon payments. So your interest is really the difference between the redemption value and the price you paid, like a treasury bill. And then uh, the normal calculation for yield, which would be a yield to maturity.